topics. So we toured the schools, we collected information, and now we are putting together our findings that we will present on October 14th. And I'm sure you'd really like to know what our findings are, but I'm not going to tell you um, because we don't have them all yet. Um, we made a commitment as a group, and we, again, we come, some of these, the people on the committee um, didn't know each other before our first meeting. Um, we've got some diverse backgrounds. We came with some, everyone had a predetermined idea in their head, I'm sure, of what we would find and what we should do. And we decided early on that we were going to, A, keep our conversations amongst our group until we were to a point where we could all agree on a message. We felt it's really important so that I can be back here, hopefully along with some of the task force members, and we can scatter throughout the community uh, once we make our presentation and all be singing the same tune. We thought it was critical because I think that's been part of the downfall and part of the challenge in communication that's been going on at the school district is that there's an effort, and I understand the effort to try and appease everybody. It's very difficult to do. It's really tough to put a bunch of strangers together and, um, and walk out of a room um, and all be singing the same tune, but I'm confident that we're going to be able to do that. I don't think our findings are going to be perfect. I think everyone on the task force will probably wish there was something that was added or something that was deleted, but we have made the commitment that we're going to go out into the community and support our findings. What I can tell you, little tidbit or the little nugget, is that our findings seem to be falling into four categories. The first category is general findings. <laughs> Not real specific, but uh, general findings on the school district as a whole, uh, kind of pertaining to um, um, communication, uh, the 25 year plan that exists, so just some general thoughts. The second is uh, high school priorities. Um, again, high school, as you know, was part of the referendum request. Um, all I heard, and I like to think I'm paying attention, was that there was going to be some safety enhancements uh, possibly some locker room enhancements. We plan to list out what we see, in our opinion, um, as the priorities, and also assign what could be some dollar ranges to those priorities. So general findings, uh, high school priorities, um, what we call um, elementary school deployment, how the district goes about offering elementary school education. Is that remodeling Jackson? Is it a new school in Jackson? Is it touching Fair Park in Decorah? I'm not gonna tell you what our findings are leaning toward, but there will be some elementary school focus. And then the fourth finding um, is operational opportunities. Um, are there, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, regarding the city of West Bend, we took a look at our uh, legal department back nine years ago and found that we can pick up $400,000 a year by outsourcing some of those services and we're not in any more legal trouble than we were then. Are there opportunities like that that the, the district can take a look at? Um, and some of these will be um, um, challenging for any board to, to make a decision on, but we felt our job, as I mentioned, is to ask questions that haven't been asked before. We're an complete independent group, we can ask the questions and we fully respect the school board's ability and responsibility uh, to act on those. There may be some things that, that are a bad idea, some things that don't work, but we're gonna ask a bunch of questions uh, regarding the operational efficiencies um, of the district. I think it's going to be positive. Um, like I mentioned, um, uh, there are some real maintenance challenges at the district. I, this may be a stretch, but I don't know if it's a whole lot of a stretch that um, the quality of the facilities that we toured, um, if they're not, I think they're about to affect the quality of education, to be honest with you. In some cases, that the condition of some of the facilities will affect education. Um, that's that. As I said, a key statement, I think, is that money is part of the solution more money may not be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Hit me. How the schools get to the state where quality of structure is going to affect education? Is it not, maintenance not being done? Um, multifaceted, I think. Um, and we really, I'll, I'll answer your question, but let me not answer it for a second. 
I've had folks come up to me and ask me, are we gonna look at teacher salaries and union negotiations and all kinds of stuff. We're trying to be nuts and bolts, black and white facilities guys, right? Fixing roofs and, and um, keeping the chalkboards in, in good shape is what we're really trying to focus on. We did get off on some tangents. We talked one high school versus two high schools. Uh, we talked athletic participation and we keep steering ourselves back to the, to the facilities. Um, there's about 1.2 million square feet of rooftop um, at the um, at the district, and that's schools, that's uh, um, maintenance facilities, that is um, the district offices. And we've got about a million and a half dollar maintenance budget, so it's only a hair over a dollar a square foot for maintenance. From what we have found, that's light by two, maybe three times. Um, um, some of that is. Uh, the reason we're light in some areas is that we do have some some old schools that take maintenance. Um, I'm gonna I'm not gonna hit these numbers exactly correct, but I'm I'm pretty close. It's like 70% of our buildings are 40 years old, and 80% of our buildings are maybe it's the other way around. 80% of our buildings are 40 years old, 70% are 50 years old. Doesn't mean a 40 year old building should be bulldozed, but it does mean that it needs and takes some maintenance. So I think. You know, historically, we've we prioritized. Uh, we prioritized those dollars into into the classrooms. It is um, when difficult decisions are made. It, um, you know, it it's tough to keep salting dollars away to fix a pothole, to fix a road. You know, it's I, I, I get it, I live it, I see it, and it's been incremental. It, it and it's it's tough to go. It takes a long time to get to that position that we're in a real challenged spot. And it's really tough to change that overnight. You know, it, again, it, it, it's, I don't know the exact answer, but I, I, what I will tell you is that I believe it in my heart that every single person, whether I agree with them or don't, runs for office because they think they can do some good. They don't run for office and make decisions because they want to monkey up and screw up a maintenance budget 20 years down the road. So I don't know, but I, we're not looking back, we're trying to look forward. I'll go ahead. Did you use any yeah. other specific school districts as kind of a model? Like, what, which school district do you think would be the um, one that has great facilities? We have, we really relied on Zimmerman. We didn't like pick any any specific school district and say we've got to be like them. I we have found that we're pretty geographically diverse. You know, if you if you take a look at uh, um, the Grafton. Not all, but the majority of their facilities, including district offices, are in one campus. Yeah. Right? They've got one giant parking lot to plow. They've got one set of rooftops. They've got a boiler system. We're pretty geographically spread out, which uh, creates some um, some maintenance, some supervision, and some efficiency challenges. So, uh, we to that we didn't we didn't say we're going to look exactly like Sheboygan Falls or whatever, but um, we've used. Zimmerman's best practice and what how they're designing new buildings, um, and we've also you know looked and tried to find out where we where where we're a little bit of an outlier, where are we different that puts us in a, in a challenge. And you know some of it truly is, and Dave probably knows this. Actually, I'm sure he knows it. The state funding going back to the '90s was kind of a it didn't treat West Bend real well, um, and I don't know all the details, and we don't want to get into the state funding formulas tonight. But West Bend started out as a disadvantage. It's difficult to say what we would have done if we got a little extra money back then. What would we have done the last 25 years with that? Maybe we'd be in the same spot. Maybe we would have spent it someplace else. But um, we started off with a little disadvantage. Um, but I think we got some. We didn't like say we didn't specifically say we have to look like them, but we did identify some differences uh, that seemed to make us I don't unique. Like Falls seems to have. 